MKUltra and Classified The military financed all scientific research into development of directed energy weapons. After decades, when progress was on the horizon, the research became classified. The public program was shut down and restarted in conditions of absolute secrecy. The published scientific papers that concerned potential weapons and even bioelectric medicine were reduced to a trickle, but occasional information about their existence continued to emerge. The work of Dr. Michael Persinger, Igor Smirnoff, Robert Becker, Eldon Bird, James Lynn, Andre Puhark, Ross Addy, Jose Delgado, Bill Van Bees, Herman Schwann, and others present sufficient evidence of the existence of these weapons. The earliest work on the effects of electromagnetic weapons on humans was done by Nikola Tesla in the early 1900s. The earliest anti-personnel electromagnetic weapons can be traced to the early to mid-1940s and possibly earlier. The first reference is existent in the U.S. Strategic Bombing Survey that reviewed Japanese research and development efforts into a death ray. Human beings, prisoners of war, were used in terminal experiments in the laboratory. Summarizing the Japanese efforts after World War II, Allied scientists concluded that a death ray apparatus 54. Puharic perfected the radio tooth implant, a small little relay receiver and transmitter. Research on living organisms revealed that waves from 2 meters to 60 centimeters in length caused hemorrhage of the lungs, whereas waves shorter than 2 meters destroyed brain cells. Dr. Andre Puharic studied the effects of radio waves on animals at Northwestern University in the late 1940s. He later founded a laboratory called Roundtable Foundation of Electrobiology. Puharic was employed at the Army's Chemical and Biological Warfare Center at Fort Detrick, Maryland, researching the effects of LSD for the CIA in 1940. Dr. Alan Fry, a biophysicist at GE's Advanced Electronics Center, Cornell University, and a contractor for the Office of Naval Research, discovered in 1958 that the human auditory system responds to electromagnetic energy in a portion of the radio frequency spectrum at low power densities well below that necessary for biological damage. Quote, the human auditory system and a table radio may be one order of magnitude apart in sensitivity to radio frequency energy. Dr. Fry proposed stimulating the nervous system without the damage caused by electrodes. He wrote two papers, Microwave Auditory Effect and Applications and Human Auditory Response to Modulated Electromagnetic Energy. Alan Fry experimented with microwaves seeking to transmit spoken words directly into the audio cortex via a pulsed microwave analog of the speaker's sound vibration. Fry's work in this field gave rise to the so-called Fry effect, which is now more commonly referred to as microwave hearing. Fry's work had obvious implications for covert operations. He synchronized pulsed microwaves with the myocardial rhythm of a frog's heart, and the heart stopped beating. Dr. Fry had perfected the induction of heart seizures by beamed electromagnetics. He microwaved cats and found that the stimulation of the hypothalamus had a powerful effect on emotions. Fry found that human subjects exposed to 1300 megahertz to 3000 megahertz microwaves at average power densities of 0.4 to 2 milliwatts per centimeter perceived auditory sounds. The peak power densities were on the order of 200 to 300 milliwatts per centimeter, and the pulse repetition frequencies varied between 200 to 400 hertz. Fry referred to this auditory phenomenon as radio frequency sound. The sensation occurred instantaneously at average incident power densities well below that necessary for known biological damage, and appeared to originate from within or near the back of the head. Dr. Fry was reluctant to experiment on humans, but others, particularly paperclip scientists, were not. Dr. Michael Persinger, a psychologist and neuroscientist, did research on the effects of electromagnetic radiation on the brain for a Pentagon weapons project. He has worked in the field for 40 years 
and funded by the Navy and reportedly by the NSA as well. Dr. Persinger perfected a means to make experimental subjects feel that they had been abducted by aliens or had an encounter with angels or God through the use of a modified motorcycle helmet equipped with solenoids to send electromagnetic pulses through the frontal lobes of the brain. Quote, Human experience of God can be generated by a process that has nothing to do with whether God exists or not. Dr. Persinger published the paper on the possibility of directly accessing every human brain by electromagnetic induction of fundamental algorithms, 1995. Quote, a process which is coupled to the narrow band of brain temperature could allow all normal human brains to be affected by a subharmonic whose frequency range at 10 hertz would vary only by 0.1 hertz. Random variations of noise within the matrices could potentially differentiate between individual brains. In other words, individuals could be identified by the specific characteristics of their brain output. He goes on further. Identification of these sequences could also allow direct access to the most complex neurocognitive processes associated with the self, human consciousness, and the aggregate of experimental representations, in other words, episodic memory, that define the individual within the brain. In other words, a person's memory, consciousness, and sense of self can be fully accessed and modified by electromagnetic means, especially a person's personality, can be completely shaped, much like the research of Dr. Ewan Cameron, who sought to do so by more primitive means. Dr. Persinger says the brain processes can be circumvented by direct induction of this information within the brain. The basic premise is that the synthetic duplication of the neuroelectrical correlates generated by the sensors to an actual stimulus should produce identical experiences without the presence of that stimulus. What Dr. Persinger is saying is that virtually any mental state can be artificially injected into a human brain from an exterior source. The most frightening thing is that the means for doing this already exists in a fully operational form on a worldwide basis. Quote, the power levels for these amplitudes are similar to those associated with the signals generated globally by radio and communication system. Within the last two decades, a potential has emerged which was improbable, but which is now marginally feasible. This potential is the technical capability to influence directly the major portion of the approximately six billion brains of the human species by generating neural information within a physical medium within which all members of the species are immersed." Unquote. Dr. Persinger's message, minus the jargon, is that the entire human race can be controlled through the use of electromagnetic influence piggybacked on television and radio networks or other technological means. Effectively, all consciousness is due to electromagnetic patterns generated within the brain. What we do is imitate what the brain normally does and apply it experimentally. Like, you know, where are these thoughts coming from? Those thoughts came from the Neuroscience Laboratory at Laurentian University in Sudbury, Ontario.